Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett called the Penn State students who rioted last night knuckleheads. They took to the streets after trustees fired head football coach Joe Paterno and the university president. A former assistant coach is accused of molesting young boys there. Paterno told the university athletic director and a vice president about one alleged attack, but Paterno has been criticized for not telling the police. Armin Katayan is following the story in State College, Pennsylvania. Joe Paterno is no longer the head football coach effective immediately. Those 11 simple words from trustee John Surma set off a seismic reaction in State College, Pennsylvania last night. Within minutes, thousands of students took to the streets, outraged at the firing of their beloved head coach. They overturned a television truck, knocked down light poles, and battled with police for hours. Sources tell CBS News the Board of Trustees' decision to remove the winningest coach in the history of major college football was in the end a matter of weighing Paterno's 60-year legacy against deep damage to Penn State's image, its brand, and a football program that generates more than $70 million a year. What we're doing is what we believe in our best judgment is in the best long-term interest of the university, which is much larger than athletic programs. Throughout a PAC press conference, Surma deflected the tough questions tied to the child sex abuse scandal. Should Coach Paterno have alerted the police when he first learned of the sexual abuse allegations in 2002? Uh, I don't know that I can characterize the board's view on specific determinations like that. Our view was a more, uh, a larger view of what was necessary to move the university in the right direction. The 84-year-old Paterno responded to the firing just after getting word. Get a good night's sleep, all right? Study, all right? We still got things to do. All right, I'm out of it, maybe now. My phone call put me out of it. He later issued a statement saying he was disappointed with the decision, but I have to accept it. Paterno's undoing came at the hands of a man he trusted for more than 30 years, former assistant coach Jerry Sandusky. One of the most respected Sandusky retired in 1999, but continued to have access to the football facilities. School officials were aware of alleged assaults inside the locker room shower in both 2000 and 2002, but Sandusky was reportedly seen working out in the facility as late as last week. I take this job with very mixed emotions. Today, interim head coach Tom Bradley held his first press conference. Not surprisingly, the legend he replaced was not far from his thoughts. Coach Paterno has uh, meant more to me than anybody except my father. And uh, I don't want to get emotional and start talking about that, okay? Penn State's decision to clean house is not just about protecting its image. From the people we've talked to, Scott, it's also about protecting itself legally against what is expected to be a flood of civil lawsuits by the alleged victims. Armin, one of the sex abuse cases was reported by an assistant coach back in the early 2000s. What's become of him? Well, that assistant coach, Michael McQuarrie, is, um, was a grad assistant at the time. He is now an assistant coach here at Penn State. The new coach, the interim coach, Tom Bradley, said today that McQuarrie will keep his job he will be at the game on Saturday against Nebraska, but it will be a game time decision as to whether he's on the field or he's up in the booth, Scott. Armin, thanks very much.